a base doesn't have a power, take a power as the wow. one. Sometimes they may not include the power. Take it as one. So in our examples here, the first portion says simplify the following. The second says evaluate the following. When we say simplify and evaluate, these two are different. To simplify is to change this one and you put it or leave it into a simple form. To evaluate is to go on and define the final answer. How to guess? Then we said you can only simplify. You can only simplify if the base is a letter and the power is a number. You can also simplify if a base is a number and the power is a letter. How to guess? In short, if the base and the power are different, one part is a number, the other part is a letter. There, that simplifies. You can only you can also simplify if the base and the power are both letters. Letter, number, simplify. Number, letter, simplify. Letter, letter, simplify. But if all of them are numbers, go on and be evaluate. Are we there? Yes. So the first one, it is x to the power negative 4 over 3. So we have x to the power negative 4 over 3. There, the power is a fraction. So what we do there, if the power is a fraction, change it by producing a root. A root, it is this symbol. This symbol is not a square root. It is a root. Okay? It only qualifies to be called a square root if there is a 2. Then it qualifies to be called a tube root if here there is a 3. A concrete if there you have a 4 and so on. But that's this symbol. It is called the root. So since a power is a fraction, what we do is to introduce a root. Now look at the power. The power has a negative. What we do first thing? is to find the opposite of the whole of this system. And the opposite is 1 over then x to the power 4 over 3. This 1 and the over are introduced because of the negative. What to do next is just to write to 1 over then the power which is in the form of a fraction to break it introducing the root. Then from there, the symbol comes inside. Now here, we have a 4 and a 3. Numerator and the denominator. The numerator is on top of the denominator. Even in the final answer, this 4 will still be on top. So what you do is this number which is the denominator comes at this place. So after writing the, the, the root symbol and the base inside, bring the, uh, bring the 3 and write it here. From there, close everything and that 4 comes outside as the power. Because the base was a letter, we end. So we move on to question 1b. There we have a fraction x over y 
and everything is raised to a power size of a two. You have seen this, right? So I said this, if inside a power is not visible, what you put there is the one. Even down here, one. Because the, this X with its power is multiplied by the power outside. The Y with its power is multiplied by the power outside. So these two areas separate them by moving the brackets. So what you do first is to write the X which is the base and its power one. Then multiply this by five over two. Then over we have one y to the power one times five over two. Then now from there we multiply the powers. And know that the one times any number it is the same number, not the one, right? One times hundred is hundred. So then you write x to the power five over two over y to the power five over two. Now we have x with the power fraction. We have y with the power fraction. What we do there? We now change the power of the fraction by first introducing a root. So introducing a root, this is what you do. Here on top, you simply write the root. Then the x comes inside the, and this 2 comes there. Now because it's a 2, don't show it. So this becomes the square root. So then this 5 which is on top of there comes here as a power. So you put this in brackets and then you write in the power. So what I've done here, I just need to fight on this one. Then over, I have y down there. So y again it is raised to a power which is a fraction. So I'll also introduce the square root. So a 2 comes there, then y inside, then the 5 outside, like this. Now everything is simplified. So if you want, you can end there. But if you don't want, this is what you can do. Since the x and the y, they are raised the same power, right? So what you do is just to introduce a very big root. Then, write x here over y. Then everything is raised to the power 5. So you cover this part and then you put 5 in outside. The meaning is the same. Because this 2, this 2, it is the one which is there. So you can either leave it in this form or in this form. Where you write them separately or just write to one root. And everything inside. But make sure that you don't write like this. Where the, 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 the root doesn't mean cover the wire. But everything must be covered. Eh? So this is the one way of writing the final hand. And in that case, you are done. Okay, now we move on to question two. Question two says we must evaluate. We should do evaluate. This simply means 
We should find the final answer. Don't stop anywhere unless otherwise. Unless otherwise. When I say unless otherwise, for instance, the square root of 9 we know is 3. What about the square root of 10? There we need the calculator. Okay? What if we have a calculator? So that it does not become impossible. Why? So we mean unless otherwise. So question two, A, we have one of uh, two to the power two, then everything is raised to the power three. What we have is one, and one does have the power, so what we put there is one. What we have here is 2, and 2 has a power negative 2. So like I said, if everything is closed in brackets, do not find the opposite of the negative, okay? What we do there best is to make out of the brackets. So the brackets, we have 1 to the power 1 times 3. The one outside over we have a 2 to the power that is 2 times the 3, the one outside. Now from here, next step is to write 1, then multiply the numbers. 1 times the 3, set is 3, over 2, then to the power, then I take 6, right? Now from there, we start evaluating. So 1 to the power 3, it means 1 times 1 times 1. And what we get? 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1. Again times 1, 1. So what we have is 1. Then over, what we have down is 2 to the power negative 6. And you cannot find the answer for negative power. So we first write the negative, but by finding the opposite of this part. And its opposite is 1 over 2 to the power 6. <laughs> So I come here. Since we have 1 over 1 over 2 to the power 6, what you do is this. 1 times over. Over simply means divide, right? So I can write 1, then divide it by the whole of this system, which is 1 over 2 to the power 6. What happens next there is changing the sign into a multiplication. So when I change the sign into a multiplication, the one will remain the same. Times, when the sign changes, these two numbers swap. A two will go on top, the power six, over then the one will become down here. And 1 into the 2 is still 2. 2 times 1 to the same. So in short, when you multiply B, what you have is 2 to the power 6. Then now you can now find 2 to the power 6 by saying 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and 2 times. Then you find the final answer. Okay? When you have a 1 over 1 over 6 to the, 2 to the power 6, don't just waste your time. Eh? You say this 1 and this 1 cancels. What you mean is the 2 to the power 
x. Because when you change this one, everything, after solving everything, this is going to be the result. So once you have this part, just write the one which is down here by saying it took the power six. And now from there, you find the final answer two times two times two times two. What do you get? So two to the power six after multiplying what you get is sixteen and you end there. So what we do with their test is to introduce a one and a one there. Then this one multiplies by the power. So what we do first is, since the power there is a fraction, and again it's a negative. So the simplest way of removing the negative is to swap the numbers. Swapping so you have 16 over 9 in brackets. 1 over 2. This 16 has the power 1, 9 power 1. So what we do next is to multiply the 1 times the power. So you have 16 the power half over 9, then 1 times the half is half. Since the powers are fractions, now you introduce the square root. So there are going to have the square root of 16. The 2 comes there, the 1 becomes the power. Now since it's a 1, don't show it. Over 9, also in a square root, the 2 there, the 1 above there. Now from there, the square root states that we should find a number, the smallest number, that when you multiply by itself 2 times, you get 16. Down here, we find the smallest number that when you multiply by itself 2 times, you get 9. So, what we have here? 4. Down there, 3. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4, 16. Now there, the 4 is bigger than the 3. Or the numerator is big than the denominator. So we divide. 3 into 4. It's one time, huh? So that is one whole number. Then remember, 1 over its end there.